Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Gabby. Good evening, Jackie. Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm I'm over this way because I'm going to be um, putting a camera down for you guys to look at the spells today. So today, welcome to um, our seven spells show, where I'll be showing all kinds of neat um, spells that we can do, and I'm going to be setting up for that in a few minutes. But what's new with you guys? Go ahead, Jackie. <laughs> I was going to say, well, anyway. my birthday was on Saturday. Um, Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. Uh, hung out with the family, went to work, worked the last last three days. Other than that, though, I've been good. Staying busy. Great. Great. Oh, How about great. you, Andy? Well, uh, this week has been very interesting for me. It's uh I swear I've been manifesting before the full moon. Um, and I don't know if I've been doing it purposefully or if it's just just happening or what. But either way, I am open to receiving it. So that's great. Uh, I've been getting lots of readings and um, trying to think what else I've been. Oh, just a lot of messages and helping people. So that's been good. Yeah. How about well, you, You've Debbie? been getting a lot of. You've been getting a lot of great reviews. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, uh, for me, it's the same old thing. Lots of readings and um, working on this. This was quite an adventure. Um, you guys are going to be getting a, a document that's going to have all the spells in it. So it's like 21, 22. Well, I revised it. It's about mm -hmm. 22 pages or 24 now. Um, I don't have all of the reviews, I mean the, um, we call it, the upgrades to it. So print it out because my printer is slightly haunted and it's decided, <laughs> it every once in a while it decides that it will print in a day or two and then it'll print everything out. And we don't know what it's doing because you know, my husband was an analyst for a one of the major printing companies in the world and he should have figured it out. It's doing its own thing, guys. So um, you will download, you'll have what, three days, three or four yeah. days to uh, download the document and, and, and there you go. That's your lovely parting gift. And um, then it goes away because those spells will be part of a book someday. So, but yeah, just working on that really hard. So um, we have a lot to go through. So I'm going to be putting my camera down, and you guys can be talking while I set up for it, okay? All righty. All right. There we go. So just to recap, everybody, um, Debbie, Debbie's document uh, with all the spells that she's offering, it's in PDF format. So I have the Dropbox link. It's shared. It's in the description in the video below so it's towards the top so you should be able to uh, download that and it is 27 pages so she put a lot of work into it it um there's just many many spells in there um the one that i i really want to see is the witch's bath uh bouquet so that looks that looks pretty cool um and what else oh jackie um we have the story contest yes we do that we're doing um once again everybody out there that's watching this live or will be watching it after it posts um i do have the link to the story contest what debbie and i are gonna do is we are doing a trilogy of the little excuse me little book of big evil you can see that so this is a book we just published um, back in June, May and June, and um, great reviews. So we are we are going to do like book two and book three, but the stories that you uh, submit, you you can enter to win. It's three hundred dollars worth of uh, grand prizes. Estimated retail value is three hundred. So that would include readings from Debbie and myself. Um, She's got some extras in there. I've got uh, a tarot deck that I created myself. 
Um, oh, a signed, uh, fit, a signed a autograph yes. picture. A signed autograph uh, photo of Angelina Jolie from the movie Melissa Maleficent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stumbled on that, but it's it's amazing. Um, and oh, and a fifty dollar gift card. So you guys. Anybody that has a really creepy, scary encounter or story, um, read the rules. I will post the link once again um, up here on the screen and also in the comments section so you guys have that. Mm -hmm. So there it is. Are we ready? Yep, Yep. we are ready. Okay. Okay. Okay, just like the last, um, just like the last uh, show that we had of spells, you get the same uh, kind of document, um, and this time I put it all in one big document so that you wouldn't have to download a lot of stuff. Um, now, this this first one. Hi, Wendy. This first spell is uh, Circle Powder Prosperity, and it's for prosperity. Now. You know that the Wiccans will cast a circle, right? And they will do their magic inside. Well, whenever you want to do a ritual or anything, you can cast a circle by putting powder around around where you're doing your um, work. And so I wanted to do one, and I wanted it to be for prosperity. So I could put it around my wealth altar. So this one's really easy, guys. The ingredients are chamomile, cinnamon, and pine. Now, for this one, you want dry ingredients. Of course, Debbie has fresh pine because I picked it off one of my trees, and I don't don't have it dry. So this is very easy, but it's a fine grind. It's like powder. So this time with the cinnamon, I didn't use a stick. I used powdered, you know, ground cinnamon from the store and then chamomile is easy to grind and then now i want you to go ahead and get your pine and i want you to strip it and i want you to dry it because we need to store this all completely dry and so it's easy you know to pull off the needles of uh once they're dead or they're dried it's easy to pull the needles off now when you do magic it's really great to work with it with the energy of your hands, right? And you'd always want to have a sacred space. So we are going to have a show on casting circles, making sacred space, and all of that, okay? So um, you would take all your ingredients, and it's great to work with them with your hand. I'm getting sticky stuff on it um, because you're putting energy into it. And you're always thinking about what you're doing. So as I would do this spell, I would be thinking of prosperity, money, success, things like that. So what you do is grind them individually. And I really, you know, if you have the hand strength, use a pestle and mortar and you put it in and you're going to ground it up like this, right? Really, really good, really fine. And when I do my Wiccan candles, my magic candles, some of the young girls are really good. They grind that stuff up to nothing. Well, I can't. And so I bought a spice grinder. So you can put everything in there. And within a few seconds of pulsing, you've got powder. Okay. So if you can't do this, because sometimes you have to uh, grind uh, white oak, you know, and, and eucalyptus and bark and things like that. So grind up your stuff really fine. Now you're going to do it one at a time. And then, you know, you just transfer them on wax paper or a bowl, glass bowl, whatever you want to do. Then you put it into one bowl. But um, you need to empower them too. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So um, when you're doing this, it would be really great for you to um, put them together and always do an affirmation or set your intention for it. So you would be putting the powdered one in and just say, I come, I, you know, I um, uh, am, you know, making a success and prosperity spell. Just always as you're combining everything. So when you empower herbs, oils, brews, 
um, you just consecrate on concentrate on the purpose and their power and visualize its use okay so you know where you're going to put it and it's for wealth and the money's going to come okay so that's what you do it's really really easy to do this um and um you want to when you have it all done and it's all dry you know, store it in glass or whatever is handy for you a lot of times um people store stuff in ziplocs um airtight is really good so use it to form a circle to spread it about around you can make a big big bag of it if you were going to do a big six foot circle outside or something and also around your altar or with around your crystals okay if you're doing a prosperity so for prosperity it's chamomile cinnamon and pine and also remember the scott cunningham book you guys incense oils and brews and hopefully we have a link to that if you don't have pine or cinnamon or chamomile you go in the back of the book and you find the list for prosperity and wealth and you substitute an ingredient that you're going to grind up okay so it's very very easy for this one fine grind each item individually and then combine them together empower them empower them by concentrating on their purpose their power you can even state it out loud and visualize it, their use okay and that is a that's for circle powder when you want to do a ritual you want to have some power to sprinkle powder to sprinkle i'm going to go ahead and turn it back to you guys and go get the second one all right well that looks pretty amazing debbie yes so um so jackie do you have anything that you were going to set for your intention uh, um, for tonight for a spell I'm, i know um my mom and i last time we did the little money jar the little altar for the money oh. um so we did that and i know we're gonna we we're doing it again once I'm done here because um, we all got home late and I cooked. So <laughs> it's a busy right. household where I'm <laughs> yeah. always busy. But I was going to say for the writing contest, you forgot to mention to our viewers that we're you guys weren't picking out the best story. You guys were going to uh, do like a like a name out of a hat or something like that, oh, right? Like a yeah. draw. Right. So I just wanted to put that out there. Hey, I got kicked out. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm uh, ready. I'm ready for number okay. two here. The second one. Okay. Um, witch's bath bouquet. So this one's really cool. Um before you do magic, sometimes uh, it's good to go ahead and get empowered by taking a bath with certain um, ingredients in. So let me show you how to do a witch's bath bouquet. And um, you can, with this one, you can just um, amplify your power when you're doing your magic, okay? So easy. So I go to uh, World Market and I buy Melita tea bags okay when i do this and because they go easily into the bathtub and they you don't have ingredients going all over the place this one's really easy it's rosemary and i have fresh rosemary so this one's good to use fresh ingredients okay because it smells really good rosemary pine cinnamon stick and orange peel um so this increases, these here increase your personal power. And you can also use this to make witch's soap. And when we get together at another time, I'm going to show you how you can buy some of that Castile soap and cut it up and make your own soap with, with this. And it'll have a purpose, okay? Plus you'll be putting a lot of energy into it. So um, I want to make sure you guys know, don't bathe in anything that you are allergic to. OK, it's so important when you're working with a lot of herbs and spices and all of that. If you have an allergy to something, you're going to have to make sure that you don't use it. And so this is really easy. 
Um, now, you can also use a muslin bag, but the, the, the thing about that is this is just a lot more porous because it's used to making tea and you can get a lot more of the fragrance. So orange peel, you guys know just to save your oranges and cut off the rind and then go and dry it. Make sure it's dried. It'll hold a lot of mo moisture for a couple of days. So make sure you dry it really well. And then um, now, oh, actually for this one, you can go ahead and just cut it, eat your orange and cut up the peel and put it in fresh. That even works better. Okay, and then a little bit of pine and as much rosemary as you want. The ingredients are up to you how you feel that you want to do this. So I put all the pieces in there. Now you can just tie this closed, you know, with a string and you're ready to go. Put that under the running water and soak in it. And this, this personal uh, concoction, a rosemary, pine, cinnamon stick, and orange peel is really to amplify your personal power so that when you're finished bathing, you can go and do stronger magic, okay? So that one's pretty cool, and that was pretty easy. All right, you guys, I'll be back. Andy, did you see Wendy's comment on that? She said, for those who no. don't have a bathtub, you can uh, steep it in a pot of hot water for 15 minutes and pour it over yourself in the shower. Oh, oh, that's a great idea. Thank that you, Wendy. That is a good idea. Yeah, thank you. That's good to good to know for the people that don't have a bathtub. That was awesome. Thanks for that. What did I miss? So Wendy uh, said that for those who don't have a bathtub, you can steep it in a hot pot of water for 15 minutes and pour it over yourself in the shower. That's great. Ah, oh, I'm going to add that to my thing, Wendy. Thank you. Yes. That's cool. Um, I'm all into that because, you know, part of the part of healing and part of energy and all of that also encompasses aromatherapy, mm -hmm. you know, and they're using aromatherapy now in the, um, in hospitals and the hospice and everything. Yeah. So um, it's important. So uh, dreaming spell is next and I'm doing okay. a qu quick look to see. Okay. What pages I'm missing. I'm page missing five pages. You guys have it in your document, but I don't. Uh -oh. So dreaming spell. Yeah, uh, it's okay. It's that printer, the haunted printer. All right. <laughs> this is yeah, a dreaming well. spell, you guys. So um, when you want to increase your intuition and open your third eye, one way of doing this is increasing the amount and quality of your dreams that you're having at night. So some say um, you have a direct line of communication with the other side and especially whatever occurs in our dreams. So we astral travel and we, we exist on the other side. We go up and check the, our records out. We do all kinds of things and we commune with everyone on the other side. So we need to remember our, our dreams and we really want to make sure that our psychic awareness and our intuition is really open when we go to bed, okay, when we go to sleep. So in this spell, you need to have a, one of these little bags, muslin bags or cotton bag with a drawstring, okay? Now, you can use fresh uh, herbs in this because um, they are, um, it's more of a aromatherapy part of it, component of this. So, but loose leaf herbs of mugwort, wormwood, lavender and rosemary now you can get rosemary and lavender really easy right especially if you were my neighbor or something you could come over and i'll just cut cut a bunch of it for you it's harder to find mugwort and wormwood so i even buy it on etsy okay so um they come in the little ziploc bags so what we would do i cut fresh um uh, lavender today and lavender heads so it smells really good Everybody says it smells like soap, but it smells like lavender. <laughs> and um, <laughs> but so you're just going to pack it in. And now you may go ahead and use an essential oil for this if you want. Do you have um, if you like if you like um, 
the scent of rosemary, you can use that. I would think most people would love to have like the scent of um, lavender in here and just go ahead and put a couple of drops. Please don't use an aroma gro um, grade or um, therapeutic grade essential oils. Do go ahead and use um, the um, essential oils, okay? They are just a better quality, they last longer, and they won't go rancid. So, okay, you're gonna pack everything in that you can, and I'm gonna keep throwing stuff in there. And I do have extra, I have extra here. How you work with rosemary, especially when you're cooking and stuff, you go, you go against the grain, you see? Mm -hmm. Just pull against the grain and just pull them off like that. Now for this, you can go ahead and cut this up and just put sprigs in also. So, I mean, as long as it fits. So whatever the smell and the scent that you want to have when you sleep, you go ahead and just stuff it full. Stick your couple of drops in there. And then also your mugwort. Um, wormwood, My I have a cousin who goes all around the world, you guys. She's a shaman. She goes all around the world. And I'm just going to use a pinch of that. And um, if anything, this is the ingredient you want to have over everything else, this mugwort. And we were talking, and she said, do you know that worm, wormwood, she said, was uh, like a type of sage. There's so many, you know, types wow. of sage out there. So um, anyway, go ahead and, and whatever you want to do, make it smell really good and cinch it up like that. Um, now, when you put the herbs in, if you want to set of an, an intention, you can. You can say something like, may these herbs amplify my dreams and grant me wisdom and may I remember all. Something like that. So you fill it and you have your intention that you repeat for all the, your, your herbs that you put in. Tie it or just do it like this. Then you can hold it in your dominant hand. Close your eyes. Imagine your third eye is opening up. Um, you know your in intuition is opening up. And you can say something like, so mote it be. So a lot of times in Wiccan things, people end it that way by saying, so mote it be. Or whatever you want to say that you end the ritual with. Um, I'm going to turn the page. Now you're going to take this charm and you're going to put it under your pillow and sleep well and dream clearly and always keep a diary um and a pen next to your bed so that you can write your dreams down and i still have somebody that wants to come on about um and talk about dreams and inter interpretation so that'd be really great so this is a good way for you to start opening up your third eye so that when you dream you dream big and you can really remember it and and and, and remember the communication remember the important things that you learn when you are on the astral and you are talking and communicating with the other side so back to you guys okay all right that was awesome thank you yes thank you see i'm i'm the one person that always remembers her dreams do you yeah i can wake up the next morning and tell you what i dream about i can but i just can't piece them together because you know how dreams are they just seem to be, um, for me, it's very symbolic because mm -hmm. half the stuff that happens um, couldn't physically happen in this world. But um, lately, I haven't, I haven't been remembering my dreams, but I used to quite a bit. Um, yeah. So um, it is almost eight o'clock. So I, or excuse me, the top of the hour, because who knows where everybody's at, right? So um, I do want to announce our sponsor for tonight. And tonight is Paparazzi Accessories. And they have just a whole uh, line of jewelry. Um, Jackie, have you have you gotten any of that? I haven't yet. I keep wanting I to Debbie order have, but... stuff. Yes, I know. Aunt Debbie ordered a diamond necklace and earrings, and all their jewelry is five dollars. Correct. Right. Yeah, the, with their yeah. earrings and the necklace, and that was the set. Yes. So, from what and Aunt, we, Aunt yeah. Debbie has shown me, it's very beautiful. It's very nice. It's 
lovely. It's really a good quality. It's five dollars, and plus shipping, and um, you get earrings and necklaces. And I, you know, a lot of the necklaces are 20, 30 inches, and I I love them. The diamond necklace thing, I love that. It's beautiful, <laughs> but um, it's just such a great value. And Stacy Carr is such a, a wonderful woman and if you're going to buy from paparazzi accessories i hope that you choose her and find our link and just go browse yeah yeah um i have i have a picture of one of your items that you got here the diamond it's, necklace yeah here we go so there's a picture of it and i do have another one um I only see the chain, but there's a <laughs> lobster claw. So. There's a lobster claw. Here we go. Okay. That one is really gorgeous. You know what? I'm gonna tell you something. That I was, you know, looking at jewelry and stuff online and I saw like a fashion ad and I was looking at clothing and on on the lady there was a very super similar necklace that I stopped and went back and enlarged. And I go, oh, it's not the same, but you would never know. And it was like on a top fashion ad. And I was like, that's amazing. Because I can wear that for $5. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's okay. true. I'm ready. I'm ready with this uh, fun one. Okay. We get to carve in the wax. Okay, this is candle carving, and um, it's a success uh, spell. So um, this is what you need. Um, now, it's success um, spell. If you want a green candle, you can get a green candle and a taper or a Volta. And on here, I wrote a yellow candle. So you can get a yellow candle if you want. Uh, you need a candle holder, which can be a flat mirror. It can be a little metal dish. It can be a glass candle holder. Whatever you want it to be, whatever you burn a Volta in is going to be fine. You also need matches, of course. And you need a sharp instrument like a pen or a, a pen. Because after I set carving my my candle with paper, paper clips, and everything to see what works best. This is what worked really great. Just a ballpoint pen. It carved the candle absolutely oh, okay. perfectly. So um, using your, let's just use the pen. Um, you carve a symbol of success onto the sides of your candle. An example would be like the money dollar sign, right? But whatever you want. If you want to get really creative and um, put any kind of uh, other type of thing on here, you can. Now, I tried to color it. didn't work so good. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see that I have actually a dollar sign carved in there. Probably can't see it in the light. But I just took the pen, and I dug it in and went like this over and over to an S, and then straight down with the pen. You can make it as deep as you want, okay? And... Um, I'm not going to light it because I actually, you know, I make candles, so I took the wicks out of these because I melt these down, and I hand dip candles. So I recycle and reuse all my uh, wax. So carve it in, and that works great. Now, you would go ahead and um, set your intentions on it. If you want to take a little bit of essential oil, you can just put it lightly on a candle you have to make sure that you're careful with essential oils or putting herbs in your candles because they will flare up you can never leave a magic candle alone don't i've had them flare up at least uh, a foot and a half you have to be careful but you can on this put a little essential oil if you want that on there and you can uh light it and um you can say you can it set your intention on it. You can put your hand over it and say that this candle is for the use of bringing wealth and success and prosperity to me. And since I'm a, I, I believe in God, I'd say in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, Amen, Amen. I would bless it. And then you can light it and burn it down. You would burn the vault of all the way down. 
down because the S goes all the way down here. Now, if you want to do a different type of um, candle or a want a wish come true, you would get a tapered candle. I'd get a shorter one because when you carve your wish into a tapered candle, you have to sit there and let it burn all the way down past your carving. And then you can blow it out. You're there for a mm. while. So you might want to get the shorter candles. So you would get a pen or whatever. And um, whatever your wish is, I don't know, Jackie, what you, let's say Jackie wanted a birthday wish. I want a special ice cream cake. <laughs> ice cream cake. No, really. If you guys want better health, with the green candle, you would be saying wealth mm -hmm. or money or cash. Something like that in it, okay? Mm -hmm. And carve it as high up as you can, and then you're going to put it in a candle holder. If you want to rub a little essential oil on it, you can. And you're going to light it, you're going to sit there and let it burn all the way down your wish, because that smoke and that wish is going into energy and going out to the universe, okay? So that's what you do with that. Let me see if I wrote anything else down. Um, yes. You know what, you guys? You make this ritual whatever you want it to be. You can cast a circle. You can chant. You can pray. You can play music. You can add crystal grid on here. Um, it's for you. And you go with your feelings at what you want to do, what you want to make of it. It can be as simple or as um, as brilliant as you want it to be. Um, when it's burning, focus on the flame of the candle and visualize yourself with success in whatever aspect of it you desire. If you see yourself driving home a new car or putting a bunch of money in the bank or whatever it is, that's what you need to believe it as you see the um, flame going down. Um, now, once the candle is burned down and out and the wax is cooled, I want you to get that wax and you know how it's going to be a big blob and go, it's all cooled, put it in a bag or a container. I put mine in uh, tin cans and um, put it in a safe place and I put it foil over it. It's reusable. You can go ahead and you can melt down the, and I'll show you guys sometime. Melt down the wax in a can and and you can dump it back into, you know, guys know the little uh, gelatin uh, pudding uh, and pudding cups that you can get mm -hmm. in the store. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gelatin them. Okay. They won't melt or anything. And once you have melted candle wax, you put a, um, a wick in it that you can get at a craft store. And you, you can put all the energy and herbs and all kinds of stuff in it. And you pour it into one of those little things slowly and you layer it and then you're going to have a beautiful candle. And you know what? Once it's cool in a few hours, it pops right out, oh, right out. And you've got a beautiful really of candle that you made yourself. So oh, wow. we can you reuse this wax. Now, once this is set, the intention that it's for wealth and success, you need to go ahead and label your baggie or your can because this can only be used for that again. Okay. Um, so, but I mean, you can make candles by just going in to thrift stores like I do and picking them up or going ahead and, um, just buying them at a dollar store. Mm -hmm. So anyway, let's see. Um, that is all I have for, uh, the candle, but I think it's awesome to do the one where you just carve your wish in, light it mm -hmm. and let it go up to the universe. So back to you guys. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that idea. In fact, I'm going to be doing that because I've been enjoying um, the the success and the the clients and um, new friendships I've developed and all of that. So this would be perfect. So yeah. we gonna, we did get a question too, though. Then. It says, "Can you put in to win the lottery?" Um, uh, my feeling on that is yes, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can manifest for that. Um, uh, Debbie may, when she ha uh, when she's available, will probably add um, <laughs> add to that. Yeah. But um, 
I know you can do it. I've heard people do it with like lottery tickets. My brother and my partner, um, they have, I've sent them to the casino with a crystal that I said, you need to put it in your left pocket because that's the side. The left side is your receiving side and the right Mm -hmm. side is your giving side. So you're receiving the energy of, uh, uh, prosperity and abundance. So I sent them off to the casino, um, and one of them won. I don't know about four hundred some dollars that night. It was ridiculous, um, but it was amazing. So it does work. So I mean, I mean, if you're talking more of a smaller scale, um, but I'm sure you could bring it on a bigger scheme. So I need to start putting. Oh. A crystal in my pocket when I go to work so I can get another yeah. raise. Now, the main thing, though, <laughs> is, and I've learned this from Debbie from day one, always is set your intention mm-hmm. and then visualize it happening. I, I believe intentions are, like, key in working with the other side as well. So, All righty. I think we're ready for our next one. Okay. Um We actually did this the last time at Blessing Salt because we have a full moon coming. We also have a lunar eclipse. Um, So you guys know um, that it's actually Thursday night that you're going to put your stuff out. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the next day um, is the full moon and early in the morning and also um, the eclipse. So Blessing Salt is something that you make that you can use all over the place. It's like an all-purpose good um, product that's mostly salt, okay? And But you can make it for all kinds of things, prosperity and health, wealth, everything. So um, on this one, I made one for protection. And I want to say it again because when you make it, then you can go ahead and... Um, Put it out in the full moon, take the lid off, and just let that full moon go into it, okay? And kind of charge it. The next the next thing we're going to be doing after this is big. This is how to cleanse, clear your crystals, and then how to charge them. And so, um, again, on, um, you can put whatever properties you want in and leave it overnight in the moonlight. Now... The, you know, the goddess and all of that of the moon, that is more of a gentle um, energy. If we were to put things in the sun, there's a more stronger energy there. So this is a really delightful um, time and to put things in the moonlight. Um, Now, in your documents, I suggest different, um, I have different recipes for you. And um, for... um, love and health and for protection. Now, this one for protection um, is already done, but um, you'd make it up and you can sprinkle it anywhere that you have, you know, just feeling like there's the energy is off, the energy is, is a little um, odd and you really want to raise a vibration or you want to get rid of something and banish it, you can make a protection salt and you can put that around your car. I use it when I go to special events when like cemeteries and things like that because I ward everybody's warding is to protect uh, everybody's cars and you know their vehicles and everything. If you have feeling that you want to clear your whole house out, you want to make a boundary and keep things out, you can Mm -hmm. use salt lines and you can use blessing salt and you can put that across your windows, across your thresholds or around your whole house if you feel like you need to. But it doesn't take much. It's a light sprinkle. When I do um, teach the classes, a lot of times they think that um, they need a huge bowl you know, they're like, how many pounds of salt do we put in? I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, you can even just put five tablespoons into a little condiment bowl and put that out. Um, we'll talk about that in just a minute. So um, pretty much using a base of a half cup of salt and um, whatever herbs that you want that's in your recipe. Again, go back to the book on uh, Scott Cunningham's Incense, Oils, and Brews. And in there are plenty of different um, uh, 
um, herbs and essential oils for different things, for love and for all kinds of things like that. So um, I am not going to go through this whole thing because you guys get to download it the next three days and read it yourself. Um, now, when you do this, when you put things out for the full moon, you can visualize the outcome of what you're putting in. You also can, um, you know what, you can put it outside, but if you're in an apartment or something, your windowsill works fine also. You just expose it to the moonlight and leave it out all night. Um, now, do you guys know what a goddess pose is? <laughs> uh, you guys? No. Okay, you guys know the YMCA song? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, the Y. The Y. You put your hands up like the Y. And that's when you, <laughs> that's when you thank the goddess, Moon, <laughs> for lending her energies to your spell and to appreciate the beauty of the full moon. So, um you guys don't have to do that, um, but that is kind of a thing that some people do. I'm going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway, so you go ahead and combine all the stuff that you want, and you put in things like protection has a half a cup of kosher salt because kosher salt is blessed, and I felt, okay, I'm going to put that in here. You can use sea salt. Um Salt and it has dill, cedar, or a clove, or frankincense, sage, lavender, and bay. Any amounts that you want to put in, and in so you can make a giant jar or big bowl if you want to use. Or if you have to leave something out, it's okay. And if you want to substitute something, just go and check the book out, and you can substitute something in there. So you're going to be getting protection. Uh, recipe, healing, love, and wealth, okay? And um, so uh, just know that it's all about intent and also that um, you can do whatever ritual that you want and follow your intuition, okay? That's the biggest thing. What do I want to do with the salt? Um, how do I want to do this? And you can make it as as big of a deal as you want or as simple here here it is and that's good always tag your stuff so you remember what's in it with maybe twine in a tag or for me i had stickers made so that just says protection so that i know what's in there so this one's all done and it's really pretty and i did a class and they made the most beautiful blessing jars and salt jars and they layered them and they made tall ones and I thought those could be in magazines. And and as I was talking, I was doing this. I went, oh, but you know what? It's, <laughs> it's pretty. Yeah. So it's okay. It's pretty. So now I will use this whenever I need protection. And I do keep this stuff. Um, I call it scratch. Biggie. When I feel like something, an, a dark entity is coming, I grab I grab it, and I actually keep it in um, a tall kosher salt container, and I just grab some out, and I just throw it um, at it or around where I want it to stay away. So, okay, now we have our big uh, thing all about spells and crystals and all that, and I'm going to go get set up. All right. This is actually a perfect spell for all of you out there, um, you know, that has wondered if there is negative energy in your home or, um, or if you sense an entity or something like that. This would be perfect for that. So um, protection is always good. You can never get a, enough of it. True. Completely agree with you on that, Andy. Um, I know this next one I have done myself. Um, when I first started in the metaphysical uh, community, um, a lot of people were charging their crystals, and I had never heard of that before. And crystals are living organisms. Um, and uh, I did some research on it, and there's... A, a variety of different 
stones and crystals and all sorts. Uh, some of them are specific to what you're trying to do. Like they have protection crystals and, um, and I'm I'm only touching and scratching the surface here, but there's just so much out there. Um, I bet Debbie will be going over that here shortly. And I'm ready. Okay. So now this is this is the part where I'm missing some of these pages. So we'll do our best. And um, I do have on the on the laptop next to me where I can see some of the pages I'm missing. So you guys will have all of them. And um, we are going to talk about cleansing your crystals. Let me get some down. Now, I can't see you guys at all because I have a document up. Um, <laughs> so don't like if you're giving me the high sign for something, I won't know. I have some really neat things that I get to deal with. Uh, let me show you just a minute. Let's get this little metal um, bowl. It just was so unusual, and I said I'm going to find something to do with it. And it's full of peridot. I don't, you can't see it, but this green peridot chips in there. And um, I was just at the store, and I found this candle stand, which I thought was really witchy looking, and I really liked it. So I've been using that tonight. Well, I want to show you really quickly. A mandel. And what I did to the top was to dip it, and all I have to do is pinch it and pull, and then I can light it. But this is full of, I, th I made these with Wendy, I think, full of um, herbs and um, spices um, that were set with intention. And it, they're really neat, neat candles to do. And so we need to do that as a um, as one of our uh, uh, shows, that'd be really great. Mm -hmm. Now, the full moon, you want to put out whatever you want to put out. You want to put your tarot cards out, and you put them out. If you guys want to put your crystals out or anything that you work with, that's fine also. But we're going to talk about uh, cleansing crystals, and then after that, I'm going to tell you how to charge your crystals and set intentions with them. You can cleanse your crystals some people do it weekly. You know, some people don't do it at all. Um, it's up to you. How do you feel? Ask the crystal, do I have energy in here? Is it time to clear, clear it? And that would work too. Now, in your handout, I have a link to how to clear a Herkimer diamond crystal. And that is a video that I did. And the Herkimer diamond is right here. And it shows you how... It's not just that you have to get a Herkimer diamond. It's any big crystal that you want to do. It shows you how I did it with smoke, okay? So um, this is my um, Herkimer full of fairy dust. It's really a beautiful, beautiful uh, crystal. So um, do, do go see that uh, video if you want to. And there's all kinds of ways to cleanse crystals, all right? So everybody mostly talks about salt water right mm -hmm. um and they talk about it being the way to do it well, you're going to find out at the end how i'm going to tell you how corrosive it, it is and what it can do your crystals and so there's better options out there well, let's talk about it anyway so um crystals can be left to soak in ocean water or mixed with sea salt table salt can be used also and um if you can't get sea salt um, you should fill a glass bowl about half full, and I'm not going to go do all that today, but you just, you know, a cereal bowl or anything, half full, and place your crystals in, let's just say we can do this one, until they're submerged um, in the salty water up to 24 hours if you want. Um, it's up to you how long you want to do it. I've read where people have, you know, put some crystals in for a uh -oh. uh, a whole, you know, week. It's just, or a couple hey, hours. Jackie, mm -hmm. can, it, can you see Debbie? Yeah, I can still see her. Can you hear her? Yeah, I can still hear her. And she's like completely black on the side. Like she's not live or something. 
I I can see um, me live. Yeah, okay. I can too. Can any of our viewers see me or hear me? Um, I have it Get up on comment. my tablet, and I still okay. see you. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump out. Okay. I totally one of, interrupted. I'm sure, but um, I I cannot hear or see her at all. Bingo. Just, just kidding. Just <laughs> okay. Yeah. Jackie, well, let's ask, is any viewers' comments? Yeah, Are they Win seeing me? Wendy said, I can see and hear you. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and continue, okay? Okay. Uh, poor Andy. It always happens to <laughs> him. <laughs> okay. So, sometimes people leave um, things, their crystals overnight. And um, uh, if they feel like it needs a more thorough cleansing, okay? And even up to a week. Um, you should... Thoroughly rinse your uh, crystals in cool running water after spending time in salt water to take away all the salt residue. And after use, the salt water must be flushed away and never reused, okay? Salt absorbs negative and unwanted energies and good energies and a kind of energies. There is a special way to get rid of salt. So, you guys, I have a video on salt. It's called Salt Hot House Cleansing, and it is... It's got almost 50,000 views on YouTube. So you have a link in your document. Please go do that because you have to make sure. If that salt gets caught up somewhere in your house or in your drain or whatever, you are going to have those energies in there. Um, so this is really considered one of the best and thorough ways to cleanse crystals. But be aware that this method must be avoided for certain crystals as it can have an adverse effect on them and always research the properties of your crystals to avoid damage. So we have, um, we have selenite here. Selenite is a no-no for um, water. This will melt, okay? And it is um, uh, not going to be able to ever be put in salt. So we'll use a different method for these types. And I do put in your document a little list of the ones that can't go in water and shouldn't go in salt and shouldn't go in salt water. But um, there's ways that you can do it. And we'll talk about those um, right now. Um, let me see if it's at the... Oh, it's at the end that we'll talk about those. So we can soak them, okay? You have to know, and I'm going to tell you the hardness of the sto stones. You have to look them up to make sure that they can go in that salt or in that water. Okay, now dry salt. There's a method that you can do where you just, um, you just pour the salt in and you just bury it. There's no water in it. Let me get this off. This is my sea salt. And so you just put it in. And I haven't checked the hardness of my stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and go with the quartz for right now. And you bury it in the salt. Okay. Woo. Good thing that was um, cheap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so you bury it in the salt and, um, or you can leave it, you can put a salt surface surface out you know those you know what they have over at world market they have that salt board for ch cheese or whatever it's for yeah you know you can leave it on the surface so let me find it and or you could bear it so like that okay so you could do that too and it could be left in the salt for several hours overnight or several days again after cleansing your crystals you should be rinsed rinse them thoroughly with cool running water to remain get the remaining salt off. And again, the salt must be thrown away and never reused because it will absorb those energies. Now, certain make certain you know that the properties of your crystals, what they are to avoid any damage from the salt or the water. So as far as uh, the cost, putting them in salty water is going to be cheaper, right? So now let's go to a way where we go, uh, I don't know if this, let's look at citrine, which I don't think can go in there. Let's go. I really want to charge this in salt. Um, uh, what do I do? Okay, I used, brought the wrong thing, but that's okay. I'll use this. Um, what do I do? Well, 
you can take a glass jar and put it in here. So this is called the, uh, like we'll call it dry salt. And you just bury, bury it in. Let's see if I can get it in. And you bring the salt all the way around it. Yeah, I could add salt and put the salt up to here so that this is going to be somewhat buried in salt, but it's not going to harm it. And if you put this out in the moonlight, it's going to get the moonlight cleansed and good energy put in it and the salt like that. Okay, so this is um, this is dry salt and it is not going to um, is that the dry salt method? Oh, this is the no contact method. So you can do that. Now, you depending on the size of the crystal, I could put more things in there, see? Like that. It would be fine to just put them in like that. And put more salt up. So you want the salt up like that. And that is a way that you can do it without hurting your crystals and them getting into anything that they shouldn't. Leave it out. Leave it out in the moonlight. Don't worry about the salt at all. Set your intentions and the clearing. So that's how you can do that. Now, um, that's an easy one. Another way that you can clear your crystals is by smudging. You guys all know about smudging with the smoke. And just put the smoke around, okay? And just yeah. like that, and you'll smudge it. And then another one is visualization. So... This is what you do. I see, just like I heal, the white light goes through it. The white light goes through it. And I could say, God's white light comes now and goes through the stone to clear it. Goes through the stone. See that white light going through. And that's the way you can clear it without using salt or anything like that. Um, that's visualization. And then um, you can do the rice method. Say, amethyst I know can't go in some stuff. And so you would bury this in brown rice. You can do that if you want to cleanse it. Um, now, you for that, I would go longer, more like keeping it in 24 hours, okay? Now, one way that some people do it is they put their crystals in what I'm going to call a crystal cave. So you guys have seen the geodes. Like some people have the giant amethyst geodes. Oh, yeah. Oh, here's like... Like here's part of one, right? So if you had a geode that you could actually stuff the crystals in, you could do that. You can leave it in there um, for uh, 24 hours and let that that good amethyst energy go in. But the amethyst energy is going to go in it. Now, this is a really good way to do your cleansing. Just running water over it plain running water over it, okay? And you can pat it dry if you want, put it in the moonlight overnight or sunlight only for two hours. And there's certain things that can't go in, can't go in. Now, of course, I didn't bring my tuning fork over. It's over on the table. So you guys know about tuning forks? You can clear your crystals with sound. So take a tuning, tuning fork, get the crystal to the fork and run it around and through your crystals, okay, like that. And let that sound go. If you guys have ever hit it, it'll go bing and just put it around and then you can silence it and there you got, you got it cleansed. Lots of ways, see all the ways that you can, you can do this, <laughs> it's great. Now, I wanna talk about Many crystals are fragile and they may dissolve like selenite. That will just dissolve and your money went totally down the drain. Um, over time, they can get cracks. And when the salt gets into the nooks and the crannies, um, that can make them fragile and crack off. Okay. And also, um, they can fade and I know that rose uh, quartz is one of the ones that can fade in if you put it in the in the sun, um, or if you were to use, you know, salt over and over. Now you can look up the hardness of your stones and make appropriate choices for them when you when it comes to clearing. Um, so no water for selenite, gypsum, hematite. You know what happens to hematite? What's in hematite? It's like iron, right? 
it will rest. No, no, um, let's say no water for lodestone and malachite. So this is just a few. You have to check whatever you are clearing. Avoid water on stones with an MOH hardness level of five or less. This is all in your in what you uh, your document that you can download. Now, no sun, no sun for aquamarine, amethyst, topaz, turquoise, rose quartz, citrine, or an opal. Okay, it's not good to be in the sun, and the rose quartz will fade out. Now, no salt for any stones of an MOH hardness level of seven or more, or actually a level of seven or more is maybe safe for them to be in salt, okay? Um, salt is corrosive and other methods work just as well uh, than using salt, okay? Uh, okay, now I did write in your documents, no salt for any stones, MOH, hardness level of seven or more may be safe. So I shouldn't have put it that way, but you guys know what I'm saying. MOH hardness level of seven or more may be safe for salt cleansing. And as you clear cleanse your crystals and implements, it's always a benefit to state your intentions. That's so important in every, that's the most important thing I think when we are working with energy is to do that. How to charge your crystals and I'm gonna go over and um, get that and you guys can talk for a few, few minutes. So. Carlos asked us a question, Andy. Um, he just said, what about sage? Can you use sage to cleanse your crystals? I know I have. Um, I've used it. I've used it before readings. Um, as something as real quick and easy and what I've had on hand, I've, d I've done that. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then it looks like Wendy, um, Wendy had said, can you use a tea bag for a no contact method? I so, want to say probably not because tea bags have um, the holes in them. So the salt would still. Oh, yeah. Touch it. And okay. Way. Even though the holes are like very, very small. Um, let's see. Uh, and anybody that's watching live right now, uh, feel free to, uh, comment, um, post any questions that you have. We'll, we'll get to those at the end. Um, and let's see what else. Okay. The one I'm excited to try is the the wealth one. I don't know. It's I'm the king of pentacles in the tarot. Uh, so I've been um, one of my first readings. I was so that's that's a that's a money card. <laughs> so, yeah. But. You want to know what's funny about that? Is it coincided with your job? Oh. Yeah. Totally did. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so okay, I'm is... ready. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, I'm just trying to get no, make I sure you know I got my missing pages. Okay. Uh charging water and crystals. Mm. with sunshine and moonlight, okay? The natural energies transmitted by the sun and the moon can also energize your crystals. And many people like to leave their newly cleansed stones under moonlight and sunlight for a day or two to allow them to absorb the different energies from the moon and the sun. So like I said before, the sun is a stronger energy, whereas the moon is a gent gentler energy. Mm -hmm. Um Again, know the properties of your crystals for the sun exposure to avoid damage and clear and cleanse as needed. Um, okay, charging your crystals. This is so easy, guys. Um, so we have clear, let's say we have clear, uh, clear stones here. Okay, here's a citrine point here. So it's been cleared. 
and I want to put it out in the moonlight and I want to charge it. I can leave it out, charge it later. I can charge it then, whatever you want to do. And so um, you can charge them for certain things. So um, if let's do rose quartz. I want this to be for love. I actually gave one to somebody and uh, charged it, and he got a girlfriend right away. And he said, you know, that rose quartz, and I carried it in my pocket, it works because I've got my girlfriend right now. So I thought that was pretty cool. It's that easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you want to make sure that this has pure white white light in it. Absolutely. You want to consecrate on a specific energy, which would be love for this one, and program it with. So you're transmitting that energy into the crystal, but keeping your focus and concentrating your thoughts and energy right into the stone. So I would be grabbing white light or seeing it. You know how I do it when I heal. When I first heal, you guys saw uh, a copy machine. Yeah. Who there has looked into a copy machine and seen that white light go right past their face <laughs> and think, why yeah. did I do that? Yeah. Okay, that's what, <laughs> we're all guilty, right? Um, so I would see, let's say I was healing a hand. I would see the white light go through and out and mm -hmm. through and out and know it's my intentions. God's white healing light goes through my hand and out. And I have completely healed my knee. I won't go into the surgery and everything that I was facing by telling them, don't give me any therapy at all. I'm going to do it myself. So that white light. So this is what we're going to do. I want to clear it a little bit with the white light. The white light goes through it. And then now my intention is that this crystal will be filled with love for the bearer. So anybody can use it. You can also mm. put a name on it. I could be putting somebody's name on it so that it's used just for them. But we're going to just say anybody who has this what, this rose quartz will have this full of love and energy and, and true love and purity, whatever you want to say. And I'm just going to put that in. And I'm putting a little pink light in now, a little pink light for love because – this is also visualization, and also we're bringing in the color component of the energy. We will do, I know Brian Bowles wanted us to talk about color breathing. Their color is for everything. It's amazing. So I'll put a little pink in there, a little pink in there. I've stated this is for the bearer. This is for love and good, good luck and love, or luck and love. For the person that has this and owns this rock and then i could seal it you could seal it by amen or or in it, by god's authority i you know program this crystal whatever you want to do or just love 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 how does it feel does it feel the energy feel like love and good energy keep putting a little pink in there pink 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 Put it in in any way that you want. You're energizing this stone. And if you can feel it vibrate or whatever. And then it's attuned and it's ready for use. Okay. It's that easy to charge your crystal. Now, as far as water goes, um, you can do the same thing. Just put, a, get a glass container. I've got this. It's got an empty glass container. I use a pitcher. I have one over there that I have my uh, water in. And put the water in. Put it out under the moonlight. I put everything out. I put a big platter of herbs and all my crystals and stuff out. And put water out, though. And then you can just let the moonlight go in or... You should always state your intention, what that water's for. It's for God's purposes. You know, it's for um, wealth. And the water that I did, I just went and put my hand over it. I said the purpose of this water that is being charged with wealth. And set it out all night and then brought it in the next day. Now, I set mine uh, with an altar, so I leave it out all the time and it naturally 
um, dries up, okay, it dissipates. And but if you were to make one and say, okay, I want to make a uh, crystal elixir or just have some water that I want to drink, make sure no bugs get into it, people. Put something over the top. <laughs> but go ahead and and say whatever it's for. And but you're going to keep the water in the refrigerator because it's been left out. Anything can get it, and you don't want bacteria or anything getting into your stuff. So. Um, another sidebar here, do not drink holy water. It isn't sanitized. There'll be always the thing saying not for not to drink it. It should be on the, if you go to a Catholic church. Um, that's because it's not handled that way, okay, because it's for anointing. So you can leave out a pitcher of water, let the full moon do its thing, and bring it in and use it for whatever you want. I always just set it in little cups on altars or I put it on my plants. If I've charged it for just good um, to make my plants grow, then I'm just going to go and I'm gonna pour it on my plants the next day. So that is how you charge yourself. You set your intentions, you put that energy right into them, okay? And whatever they want. Now we look up, you can look up uh, online or here is Scott Cunningham's book, on crystals, crystal, gem, and metal magic. And once you find out what are the properties of the certain stones, we know like this one is for love, and then you can put the right energy in with it because it's naturally for love. And I know it's because it's got that beautiful pink blush on it. So anyway, that's what I have to say. You've got seven spells. And I did not go over everything because there's more in your document, okay? And um, were there any questions at all? Yeah, yeah. We had a – here's a good one, too. And I was curious, too, Debbie, uh, your thoughts on this. Um, here's the questions. From Lisa Holmes, can my crystal ball set – be set in the moonlight. I have set a lot of my crystals out, but have not set my crystal ball out yet. Oh, absolutely. Yes. You you want to uh, clear your, your crystal balls and stuff. Now, let me tell you about crystal. Crystal is very fragile uh, for um, it's got a higher lead content if it's true crystal so you be careful handling it sometimes and also know that it doesn't like uh, extreme temperatures and absolutely would never ever uh, use uh, salt in it so use an alternative method but absolutely you want to put anything out that you're going to use don't be worried like um, you know I want my tools that I use well, clear them. When you are, if say you have a knife that you use, if you're pagan, you've got lots of knives and you're going to be carving stuff or whatever, clean it, put it out there and just let everything have the good energy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You don't, you wouldn't charge something like that. You wouldn't put a charge or an energy into it, but just let it be it bathed in that moonlight. Don't be afraid to put anything out there. And I put my herbs, I put my spices that I put on a platter for an altar, put out my green candle, put out my water, pitcher of water, whatever you want to do, put it out there. Now, your jewelry. One of the things that you'll read about in your documents that I didn't go over is if you get estate jewelry or, you know, or there's certain kind of jewelry that you go, I really, I, I really love it, but it has a weird vibe or anything. Mm -hmm. um, or you just want to wear, you have crystal jewelry and you want crystal, your crystals to be charged with something. I want you to go and put your jewelry out. Okay. And you can also charge it by, you know, taking your necklace and going over it. And, and especially if they're like all, all pearls or all, all um you know how they have the uh, the amethyst the little amethyst and the little garnet strands that you can buy and that you wear just charge them if you want to but if anything put your jewelry out if you have gotten something that was inherited or you got it in a thrift store or something and you go i don't really like the 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 
the vibes off of it, then go ahead and clear it. Clear it with the salt one. Where this is not going to be in the salt, it's going to be in the glass tubing, the glass in the salt bowl. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that one? Yeah, the non-contact method, right? Non-contact, perfect. Go ahead and put your jewelry in there. Leave it there for 24 hours. And then you can go ahead, if the next full moon, put it out in the full moon. Okay, but you've got to clear some of that stuff in. Sometimes we um, we don't understand that when things start going weird in your house or people start getting sick in your house, what did you bring into your house? You know, somebody could have brought somebody in or you could have brought a piece of something in. And sometimes, like me, someone who, if you saw my house, is all full of old clocks and antiques. And so we have to be careful. I found a really neat guy. I have him over on the on the thing, and he's a it's an Eskimo carving, and he was in a thrift store, and I was just had to have him, and I had a Wiccan friend who picked him up and held him and said, "Yes, he would like to go home with you," and so he did. <laughs> So if you don't have your Wiccan friend with you or if you're hard at getting, you know, being able to really grab the antique and say, okay, this is what I feel like this would be a good addition to my home and this would be okay to bring in, then just go home and immediately put it in a, in a, I have a lot of beakers and stuff. My husband has taken them all. He's, I'll, I'll go out there and I'm going like, um, that was mine. And he's got something <laughs> in it, you know. Whatever. He's cleaning a, a pocket watch or something. So, um, but just get the glass container, put your jewelry in it, bury it in the salt container bowl, and leave it for 24 hours somewhere and let it just be quiet. Okay? And that'll clear that. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, go ahead, Jackie. Did, did Which, you find one? Let's see. Well, I know we went through some... And I'll get Aunt Debbie's opinion on it. Um, where did it go? Was that Marco or? Oh, it was the Wendy. one about the tea bag. Yeah, here it is. There we go. Can we use a tea bag for the no contact method? No, it's got too many holes in it. Okay, so I was right. <laughs> you want no contact whatsoever. Yeah, you can't use fabric or anything. And you guys, the reason that a lot of spells and stuff are you, are used with glass is because really that was heated sand, right? Mm -hmm. And it's oh. pretty nat it's pretty natural and it's clear. Mm -hmm. And if you put something in the moonlight, it goes the moonlight can see it. Yeah. And all of that. So we tend oh, to right. like to put things in that. If you put salt in some um I don't know, aluminum or some metals that might be bad for it also. So glass is so wonderful, and we like to do a lot with glass when we can. Yeah. And so then, no on the tea bag. And then we had Marco, I think is the one, Andy, you were talking about. Oh, is this where um, I yell polo? <laughs> you guys yeah. missed it. That was my joke. <laughs> um, so Marco Fernandez said, what about using baking soda to cleanse? Oh, my goodness. You know what? That is one of the things I would look up to find out exactly what it is and what the use is. Um, I'm trying to think of which book uh, oh. that would be. Because you will want to find out what it is and where it's at and what's the use for it. And I'm not sure that... It's in it, this one. And I but I have it, never actually heard about using that. Um, you know, other well, than you regular, know, baking, regular yeah, cleaning. Baking but. soda. Is, yeah. Baking soda is absolutely wonderful. Yeah, we use it for cleaning and even brushing our teeth and all kinds of things. But uh, Marco, for that, I would, uh, that's a good question. I would definitely look it up online in a reputable site. And um, I don't think that, I just looked quickly in Scott Cunningham books and it wasn't in there. And so, but just, just check, 
You know, it is an abrasive because we brush our teeth with it, right? Yeah. And you do brush it on right. to clean. So it's an abrasive. So we want to be careful with that as well. But I would look that up. Okay. That was a good one. Sorry, yeah. I didn't have the answer. I think that I don't that have them all. Most of <laughs> I think that was most of our <laughs> questions. Um, yeah, I did answer this one because of me personally, but I wanted your expertise on this with Carlos. Um, he is asking, what about using sage? Can you use just regular sage to cleanse your crystals? Yes, you can. Now, you can just go ahead and do the thing where you just bury it if you want, even though I put on there smudging and just get the smoke around it. And that's what I did. Um, I used smoke on that Herkimer diamond in that video where I put the cookie jar over the top and put a towel around it and it had a candle burning in there. And the candle had a set intention. And then it just um, burns up and makes a lot of smoke and goes out because there's no oxygen in there. But so you can just light sage and put it around the crystal. You know, you can hold it, put it around the crystal and get it nice and smoked and that works fine. But you know what? You can also go ahead and, cause I use, even though I have smudge sticks, I use loose sage. And there's no reason that you couldn't just bury your crystals in a bowl of broken up loose sage. Right. Uh -huh. Something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just like you would bury salt. You're going to find out that salt isn't my favorite thing, even though it's most people's favorite thing um, to, to clear. And it's just because I, you know, when you start buying herbs and crystals and stuff, you get a little bit of value going. It's expensive to get all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want to over time, uh, it gets in the cracks and all of a sudden it's bam, broken half. Okay. So you're welcome, Marco. So we want to make sure that um, we do it. Now, the deal is when people start doing this stuff and they find out properties and everything, you break down rituals, you break down what we're doing into s simple things. We're setting an intention and we're using energy. So as much right. as you just look at these crystals and you ask you ask that higher power to clear them you're cleared you want a lot of this stuff the rituals and stuff is for us and it empowers us to make uh, stronger magic mm -hmm. so but you can do you can simply set an intention for them to charge them you can simply put the pure light of your whoever your uh, power is if it's the universe god goddess uh you know whatever you know they have the power and that is to cleanse it to charge it set your intention these stones are for the purpose of and that's what i do when i make any of my mixtures i'm setting that purpose and i'm stating it and i'm telling it part of manifesting remember uh Andy, is telling yep. the universe what you want. It's not pretty, please, it'd be really great if you could arrange this. Universe, I want. And that's what you do. So we are working with our crystals, and we are asking God um, and, and commanding energy to clear and to cleanse. So you can make it whatever you want it to be. It's just like where you can go into a Baptist church somewhere and sit down and sing and rock out and have a great time. Or you could go to a Catholic church and you can kneel and anoint and you can have the incense and the beautiful music and everything sounds like angels. You're still in church, people. You're still in church. You're still communing with God. And so... It's what you want. You want it simple. You want it because it makes you feel better or more empowered to do more or better and more powered to do less. It's you, It's up to you to set what kind of ritual and how you want to cleanse your stones. Mm -hmm. But what we have to look at is the care of them. So for mine, I'd probably rinse them quick with running water and pat them dry and put them out in the moonlight. And that's what I'm going to be doing. Tomorrow I'll be getting everything ready. And putting out my pitcher of water 
Now, last time I did it for wealth, so I don't know what I'm going to be doing this time. What am I asking for? We'll see. Okay. <laughs> so Yeah, I, I've got to get my stuff out, too. Yeah. And what are you going to do? I, what are you putting uh, out? I want to get my crystal ball out because um, I think Lisa had mentioned that, and I'm like, I don't think I've ever actually – Put it out well, maybe once, but it's been a long time. How so how I big is your crystal ball? It's two hundred millimeters. Well, I'm wearing shorts, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> but it's behind me. <laughs> it's behind me on there on my altar up there. So I don't know okay. if you can see it from here. Oh um, wow! So no. Gloria says thank you for this information. Thank you, Debbie. Oh, you're welcome. Now I'm going to be right back. I'm going to go get something. So, yeah. Um, the other thing, just as a reminder for e everybody watching or will be watching later, um, you can charge your tarot cards. I know Debbie, Debbie has mentioned that. So you can you can charge those out in the moonlight. Also, your oracle cards, if you're into that. Um Pendulums, you can do that. Set your intention. Have them charged. Yes, and... cleanse those things. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's her crystal ball. Oh, awesome. That's. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's really heavy. <laughs> it's really heavy. This is one of them. This is a big guy. Yes, do put your crystal balls out, and um, I think I will do that too. And um, I just hunt around the house and find some stuff that has to go out. But um, yeah, it's great to um, clear it. And I don't really use this as too much. Um, I need to be using my black mirror over there. Yeah. And um, and using this a little bit more. But I get I get into looking at the stuff upside down, and I'm just like, whoa, that's really cool. Um, <laughs> but you have to be careful with your crystal balls, people. I have to have mine. I cover it, and I put it away where the sun can't touch it. Why? Because I want to keep my house, and I don't want to burn it down. Oh, good point. It, right? It'll magnify it. This is a huge ball. And if it gets in the light, there's a chance that it will cause a fire. So, and and it's good to, I feel like it's good. I just cut this little cloth out. I feel like it's really good to, to cover my stuff anyway. Hmm. And especially that black hmm. mirror, you never know what's looking back at you. Right. You know what that reminds me of? What? Is Lord of the Rings when they... Uh, find those scrying balls and they cover them up and Gandalf is like, don't be looking in there. Cause you don't know what's looking back at you. <laughs> so uh, You're talking it, it to does. someone who hasn't watched the movies. <laughs> oh, you haven't. Oh yeah. It's I, exactly I, what you just did there. I think the first movie maybe I watched and I have, you know, I have the signed autographed, photo of the guy wearing the ring and I also have a copy of the ring but that was because I was going to give it out as a prize someday I have to find geeks that like oh like Andy <laughs> <laughs> that like the Lord geek <laughs> on our show <laughs> <laughs> that's funny <clears throat> well you guys we're going long here but it's been a lot of fun, a lot of information. You guys make sure that you download the documents because I'm going to be really strict. I'm not, they're not going to be public after uh, like three days. So I've got like secret stuff for a book and I'm trying to get my secret box. Uh, yep. Once, once box. again, you guys, uh, <laughs> the document link is in the description below so feel free uh, there's only going to be like what three days it's going to be yeah. available for download yeah. so yeah so that's it and we have a um a friday show we'll be giving away a gift card which i have to go get because i usually have a stash and i think i'm all out of them 
So the taco one went out, and I think somebody got the tacos. Uh -huh. And um, thank you, Carlos. I like my little crystal ball. That one, you know, is good. But you know what? My whole thing is looking into black to me is a lot easier than looking into, uh, so scrying that way. Mm -hmm. And I like wax scrying and I teach the class. You guys need to come to Southern California because definitely join one of my classes and we'll, we, we melt the candle into the water and then we, we discern what, what the message is. It's just really fun. So uh, we'll do that. So Friday, hey, I don't know what we're doing, but we're doing free readings. So everybody come with <laughs> yes. your questions. I know we're doing that. I'm trying to really get people scheduled, but, uh, you know, we have busy lives, guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. Yeah, it is. I think it's uh, time to go to the lobby unless you have okay. something to say goodbye or say whatever you want to say. Okay. Um, well, uh I want to say thank you to everybody once again. Don't yes. forget to submit your scary story or your yeah. scary encounter. Um, PsychicFixes.com. There's a link in the description. Uh, it's it's around three hundred dollars. It's a three hundred dollar mm -hmm. value, is what it is. So um, go ahead. I just and love the fact uh, that we are just going to have a random drawing. It doesn't have to be the best story or anything, any right. just ama amazing spiritual story, just send it to us. We are actually going to publish some of them in our next book, which we hope are going to be out in about two months. So we'd really love to have your stories in there and you can be anonymous or we're going to put your name in it. Thank you. So, Anyway, we appreciate you guys watching so much. It's just a blessing to us to be able to, to come on and to talk and to just be ourselves because we truly are. Nobody on online messes up this much. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> well, we lost you a little bit this time. Yeah, but we are going to be playing strange. Bingo. We're going to do uh, another game night. And we'll give away prizes. We'll give away prizes. Like I'll send crystals and charms and stuff. That'll be fun. And but one is going to be bingo. Like how many times does do we lose Andy <laughs> or Debbie? Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'll be fun. All right, you guys. We appreciate you so much, and hope that you do join us on Friday. Try to win that big gift card that we have out. Right. You're welcome. Bye, Carlos. Good night, everyone. Take care. Good night. Bye. Love you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.